Christopher Nolan, love him or hate him, uh, those are the options. Hopefully you've picked one. The first Christopher Nolan movie I saw was Memento, which as an annoying 14 year old, I thought was genius. Uh, then I saw Inception, which as an annoying 15 year old, I thought sucked ass. But now I've seen Tenet, and obviously as the most enlightened person alive, I'm gonna tell you why Christopher Nolan is just a okay. I'll probably do spoilers for Tenet, so if you haven't seen that, uh, just don't, and just watch this anyway. Not that it's bad, it, it's fine. It's the cinematic equivalent of the DVD screensaver. Christopher Nolan movies are very distinct, very intricate, with some kind of narrative device to justify a non-linear structure. This should not be news to you. But he is very good at it, mapping out these events so that moments can repeat themselves in different contexts and still drive the narrative forward. And I think it's great when sci-fi defines its rules and sticks to them, even if poking a pencil through some paper would have been enough. But what's the structure actually doing? Like, Memento has a protagonist with anterograde amnesia, so that movie has this reverse timeline with a flashback structure so that you essentially experience the movie through the character's eyes. The structure enforces that audience character dynamic, which makes that movie so impactful on a level that it would never be able to reach if it had been linear. But that's not like a universal rule on its own. A non-linear structure doesn't do anything for me. Tenet's fast-forward rewind structure isn't doing anything above the literal plot level. Anyone can do a non-linear edit. Right now I can cut to this. Now, does that make it clever? No. Does it make it a better watch? No. It's inherently alienating pseudo-intellectual back padding, which is jarring and does make this video more complex and difficult to follow, but on its own, it's not clever or interesting, like you would think, it's just annoying. What is it doing for the narrative? But there's a much more pressing question to answer. How do you get a wide audience to understand this structure in the first place? Memento is not an easy movie to get into. Um, of course, by the end, everything gets explained, but to start with, it's very alienating. And it's supposed to be. Uh, it's his only movie where that's clearly the goal. But a non-linear structure is just inherently alienating. So the rest of his movies require a lot of gymnastics to make the structure work in spite of itself. And his solution is exposition, just a lot of exposition. For the first half of the movie, every event is preceded and followed by an expositional dialogue scene. You know, you might get some character moments in there too, but the main goal of any dialogue is to keep the audience well informed, which presents a problem of its own. After spending the first half of the movie explaining all the rules, he has to throw them out in Act 3 for an emotional resolution and a cool twist. Which is a pretty jarring shift and it makes me ask all of these annoying nitpick questions, you know, mechanical questions, which I would never normally ask while I'm watching a movie. After repeatedly explaining that you can't change the course of events, both the Act 3 action set piece and the twist of Tenet are bootstrap paradoxes. It seems to be a very popular ending twist right now to have your movie be a time loop. Uh, I think that's gonna age about as well as it was all a dream. Now, things happening at the end because you want it, because it's the most emotionally satisfying conclusion, is a perfectly good reason. That's the usual reason that things happen at the end of a movie. And I think it's great when sci-fi goes, don't worry about the rules too much, and just has a nice emotional arc but it does feel unearned after spending an hour and a half being spoon-fed Christopher Nolan's narrative logic and Wikipedia history. <music> Nolan characters are all very one note. The extensive rewrites that Leonardo DiCaprio demanded on Inception clearly paid off because that character almost has two notes. But those blank characters can work. Uh, Interstellar presents a bunch of one note characters and then systematically pushes them all to their emotional extreme. And The Prestige presents two very blank templates of masculinity, but the story actually hinges on that. And of course, the big shock twist of The Prestige is that a character who appeared to have some depth uh, actually doesn't. <laughs> but their movies about guys being dudes so well that they can think their way out of mental health problems without ever having to talk to anybody. But Tenet's an outlier. It just willfully forgets about characterization. 
which is maybe a smart choice given that he's not the strongest at doing it. The protagonist is geniusly called the protagonist and we're told that he's just a blank slate who will do his job. Of course he still acts like a generic action movie hero but the point is it doesn't matter you're not supposed to care. Tenet is about nothing and the protagonist has no internal struggle. All women in a Christopher Nolan movie are either in need of a male, dead or going to be. I'm very excited for the day that Elizabeth Debicki gets to play an interesting character but for Tenet she gets the backstory of abused wife and a character motivation summed up uh, in the expertly crafted exchange. Everyone and everything that's ever lived will be destroyed. Including my son and also a chance to save my son you have no idea what that means to a mother. To which the protagonist replies, No. I don't think he's intentionally making a statement. I think anything beyond first wave feminism would be a genuine surprise to him. It is very tempting to look at his movies with a socio-political lens, but you won't find anything. You know, he said that The Dark Knight Rises wasn't political, and I believe him, despite a lot of political aesthetics, it's fundamentally a movie about nothing, it's about reinforcing the status quo, as are all of his movies, which Tenet takes to the extreme with an antagonist who wants to save the human race from a climate extinction event, to which the protagonist responds, uh, it's every man for himself, and stops him. <laughs> but when you have a movie that is about nothing and is so defined by its cold logic, the plotting has to come from our characters. and. For Christopher Nolan, that usually means our protagonists withholding information from each other. And maybe this is just me, but if honest communication means that the plot of your movie doesn't happen, that's not exciting, it's just annoying to watch. But there is a reason for it. These are movies about deceit, they're movies about the protagonist deceiving themselves and the movie deceiving you. So it doesn't really matter if the plot itself is weak, because they're never about that. They're about the trick. They're about Christopher Nolan showing you how clever he is. He shoots with a very subjective camera. You can see it in the action. It's very grounded. You don't really get big sweeping wide shots or anything too fancy. It's mostly from the protagonist's perspective, from positions where a cameraman could realistically be, which really does ground it. He can do these big action set pieces and keep them personal. Of course, he doesn't seem interested in keeping his movies personal in any other way, but at least it's something, I guess. He's often praised for not doing visual effects. The Dark Knight movies are on the lighter end of the modern superhero movie VFX shot count. I mean, I'm not sure what people were expecting. How many blue lasers could a Batman movie possibly have? But he does carry that grounded mindset across all of his movies, which is refreshing in a blockbuster, but it particularly limits Tenet. It's never able to deliver on its promise of spectacle because it's not visually designed to, it's visually designed to be very personal. But the story it's trying to tell isn't personal at all. There's some guy and he has these rules for editing. Uh, each edit should satisfy six criteria. Uh, emotion, story, rhythm, eye trace, 2D plane, and 3D space, but in that order. So if there's a cut that's the best choice emotionally, but it doesn't make any spatial sense, you should just go for it. And Christopher Nolan takes that to the extreme where uh, the entire movie is essentially edited out of order, which is interesting. And even if you could go through and nitpick the details of every cut, it creates this nice tonal flow to everything. But in the action, I wanna feel an action scene. I want story and I think he's so overvalued that shot to shot flow that the action as a whole becomes impossible to follow. You can never know the geography or the stakes or who you're looking at because that information isn't there. It's been reshuffled until all you can do is sit back and go, okay, stuff's happening now. On that micro scale, he's probably making the best choice, but if I can't follow it, I can't invest emotionally. But it's not just the action, he carries the style all the way up. Memento makes you experience the character's disorientating world through disorientating editing. Uh, Batman Joker makes you experience the Joker's chaos through disorientating editing. Uh, Inception kind of makes you experience a disorientating premise through disorientating 
editing, but by the time you get to Tenet, it's like he's forgotten what made it work in the first place. The style doesn't feed into the substance at all. And this is my problem with Christopher Nolan. If all the technical successes undermine the emotional core, and all of the emotional successes undermine the technical framework, you're not making something with depth, you're making something worse, no matter how much editing you do. He obviously has a very strong mastery of the technical, and the emotional side is kind of like if Spock tried to make a J.J. Abrams movie, but it's serviceable. Memento isn't particularly strong, technically or emotionally, but they feed into each other, and that's where the depth comes from. Whereas Tenet has them cannibalizing each other with layers of convolution piled on top in the hopes that you don't notice. Now I shot this video twice, once arguing for the technical framework at cost to the emotional core, and in this one, I'm arguing the exact opposite. And then I've intercut them so that it seems like I'm just dogging on Christopher Nolan for 10 minutes. And hopefully that shows you that without rationalizing the technical with the emotional, a coat of aesthetic complexity isn't enough. Now, does that make it clever? No. Does it make it a better watch? No. It's inherently alienating pseudo-intellectual back padding. Clever me.